Are you too squished? Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. 8.55. 8.55. On Fun Friday. Fun Friday is here. <clears throat> you know, here's the thing. If it is further back like that, we have yeah. to probably speak louder. Yes. Yes. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patrick. Yes, yeah, speaking oh, up. We'll have to yeah. crank that sucker up. Hey, Mike. Mom, I think, is watching too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your five minute call. Five minutes. If you haven't uh, peed already, probably should. Probably five should. Minutes. Five minutes, everyone. Five minutes. Thank you, five. Thank you, five. So, we're still testing this out with this new equipment. So, I think that the proximity, hopefully, you're hearing those calls. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear. If you can't hear, just say, uh, say I can't what the hear. Hell? Yeah. Uh, Sarah Morsi. Sarah's here. Adrian, Michelle. I saw your fancy new tattoo. Janine Wagner's here. I've got to put on my lip gloss. Tom. How's everybody doing? It's fun Friday. It's, it's finally Friday, right? Finally Friday. Fun Friday. Oh, I see what you're saying. So let me see. What? This. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, I want to take this wall out. <laughs> A little housekeeping here. How do? Oh, hi, Mom. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Kathleen. Yay. Maureen and Betsy are back. Back in Trenton. Ah, back home. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's great. Hey, Roberta. Oh, you know what Marcia's I Marsha's here. What'd you forget? Oh, it's here. It is? Uh-huh. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, we got it all. We got it all going on. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, oh, there's some glasses. Part two. With this. Yes, part, part two. two. Indeed. indeed. What happens next to these That's two right. crazy, right. crazy fools in love? Yes. Uh, James Farley's here. Hi, Hi James. James. Yeah, I, I was going to wear my glasses, but I don't think that's going to work with our new uh, setup. Well, it looks know. like I have, uh, that yeah, would be like I, a character choice, yeah, yeah. like googly eyes. That's, ooh, ooh, that's, ooh, 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 ooh. yeah, that's, that's for another play. <laughs> yeah, that's not for this play. <laughs> that's for a Wacky Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> Wacky Wednesday indeed. Um, uh, Jason's here too. Hi guys. Hey guys. Jamie B. Yeah, so what's everybody been doing since we last saw you on Wednesday? Hanging tough? Wednesday seems like a long time ago. Seems like a very long time ago. Please do so. Yes. yes. Janine says, have you not read your sign-in sheet? Yes, we have. We're going to read it to you now. Let me turn on my fancy music. So, uh, if you don't know about the sign-in sheet in professional theater, sometimes a stage manager will leave you notes on the sign-in sheet. Here's our notes from our stage manager. Ah, yes. Notes from Milo. Prepare reference materials and announcements. <laughs> Pictures, books, web addresses for opening. Thank you. Noted. Check and preset your props and costume pieces. We don't have any for this evening. Oh, yeah. So that's a plus. That's a big plus. Right uh, there. Bit of advice. Love this underdress with garments that aren't bulky, cleany, clingy, or grabby. You want to easily slip something on and off and avoid looking like an awkward amateur, for heaven's sakes. Remember, you don't have dressers, and I only have paws. No opposable <laughs> thumbs. Uh, check your courtesy station for Ricola and tissues and facial wipes yeah. for makeup removal. We need a little courtesy station. Thank you. Right Love a courtesy station. Yeah. That's right. I joined Equity just for the courtesy yeah. station. Yeah. Uh, Tea, honey. Refill mm -hmm. your water bottles. We always do. Towel or rag for spills. That is a must. Yes. Uh, yes. Prep your tasty beverage. Prep your tasty beverage. Yep, yep. Um, have a good show, folks. Hey, look at that timing. That this was kind of amazing, isn't timing. it? Yeah, it very is. Nice and very Beautifully. well. Thank you, thank you. Very well. Yeah. She's a pro. She's a real pro. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a very, that was a very good cold read. He's a very oh, good cold thank read of you. that. Yeah. Thanks so yeah. much. Hey, y'all. Thank God we're finally in places. Ladies and gentlemen, could I have places, please? Places, please. For the top of the show, places, please. Places, please. Thank you, places. Thank you, places. All right, fun Friday. Here we go. 
Stand by, please. House to half. House to half. Oh, go. Lights. Go. Sound. Go. I hope you can hear that. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tiny Theater. Thank you for joining us. Before we start tonight, folks, let's get all of those irritating distractions out of the way, shall we? Yes. Take a moment to silence your cell phone, spouse, children, and pets while you're at it. Unwrap those candy wrappers, open those chips, and pop that corn. Now, give yourself a break. Crack open a tasty beverage. Sit back, put the world on pause, and enjoy our next performance. Rachel and Brendan, take it away. Take it away, she says. Take it away. Oh Thank gosh. you, Janine. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Welcome to Tiny Theater. Hey, it's Rachel. And Brendan. And we're still here. And it's Friday. Fun Friday. Fun Friday. Sitting in our closet reading plays from our house to your house. That's right. Uh, we hope y'all had a, a good yeah, that's week. that's not going to work. Okay, well, we'll just do something different. It's all about the improvisation here in Tiny Theater. We're yeah. just bending yeah. and swaying with the bamboo here. That's right. Uh, that's so, right. yeah, we hope everybody's had a good week. Um, we started, uh, with our playwright that we're going to announce right now. Right Let's now. do it. Our playwright tonight is... Kathleen Reichelt. Kathleen. So this is part two of three installments of Kathleen's play, uh, Darling Genius, or How to Write a Novel in 30 Days. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we kicked off this little uh, project with Kathleen on Wednesday night. Uh, we did uh, Act 1, Scenes 1 through 4. Tonight we'll do the second installment and then join us on Monday for uh, Part 3 of 3. Yes. Um, we don't really have any thank yous or announcements so we much. Don't. We don't. There's a dog barking tonight. Can so you hear him? we're just going to make that part of the ambiance. It's part of the show. I yeah. hope you don't mind, Kathleen. Yes. Um, yeah, I hear him now, too. That's Max. Okay, Max. Max, Max likes is... To... Where's Milo? Oh, Milo's outside. Well, <laughs> but, no, we're good. we're good. He's okay. Milo's safe. Don't worry. Milo's in good. our lanai. That's good. Yeah. Or breezeway is what he's, we call it. Yeah, he's behind a locked gate. He's doing his own Does thing. anybody have any announcements for us? They're let's probably just... like, get going. It's yeah, Friday. Let's get, let's get the show on the road here. <laughs> So let's just oh. jump in, friends. Okay. Uh, thanks for being with us. Um, let's just get all situated here. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. All part, right. Part two. Here we go. Darling Genius, or How to Write a Novel in 30 Days, a mumblecore-inspired love story for the stage in two acts. The characters are Simone Miller, a woman in her 30s, 40s, confident, smart, playful, and J.P. Elliott, a man in his 30s, 40s, charming, sometimes awkward, lovable. Okay. We're jumping in. Act 1, scene 5. Lights up on the apartment. Simone is at the table typing on her laptop, wearing a hat, sweater, and a jacket. JP enters with a paper bag. Why is it so cold in here? Because it's February and the heating bill is astronomical. How goes the research? It goes. I know you've got a lot on your plate, but I have something I'm dying for you to read. It might be a chapter, it might be a scene, I'm not sure. He kisses Simone on the top of her head. He goes into the kitchen. Yeah? If it's a scene, I can help you, but if it's a chapter, you know Larissa is your girl. As if Larissa could ever be my girl. I'm still not over the fact that you kissed her. Why not be mad at her instead of me? It's bad feminist for me to be mad at her. <laughs> she kissed me. Yeah, but you are my boyfriend. JP enters with two cups and a bottle of wine. What's that? And I thought I'd be sophisticated and get wine for a change. Why not use the amber glasses? Ah, uh, creature of habit. Cheers. Doorknobs. Cheers, doorknobs. JP drinks. Simone lifts her glass and then puts it down without drinking. Uh, uh, 
I saw a great sofa at Burnoff's today. Do you really want a sofa? Genius, you've been here almost half a year and you still don't have a proper living room. I don't need a proper living room. Why do I need a proper living room for? What, what's the matter? What's upsetting you? Nothing. Something. I'm pregnant. What? Are you joking? I wouldn't joke about that. That's incredible. Really? You're pregnant? Yes. That's incredible! Is it? We're gonna have a baby! That's beautiful! <laughs> It's been scary and unexpected and beautiful. I'm so scared. Hey, don't be scared. That's a beautiful thing. Don't, don't be scared. Come here. JP extends his arms. Simone goes to me. We haven't been together for even a year. Well, we've known each other forever. We've been friends for years, what, but... What do you think parents are? I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean it was as a test. When two people come together and make a family, they're on the same side. Parents should be friends. Are we friends, JP? Of course we are. I don't know if I want to have a baby. Oh. I'm not saying that I don't want to. I'm saying that I don't know if I do. What are you saying that you want to... No, I, I don't want well, to... Then, then what? I, I just... It's that... I, I didn't see this coming. It wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> Aren't you always saying that we've got to go with whatever happens? No plans? See where life takes us? Wander? I mean, I mean, wow. If you want this, it changes everything. I'm going to be a dad. You want to be a dad? Yeah, I've always wanted to be a dad. I, mean, I don't know if I'm ready to be a dad, but... I mean, do you want to be a mom? I've never thought about it. Well, so you're thinking about it now. Do you want to? Or, I mean, do you want to be a mom? Yes? Maybe? I'm scared? I'm scared too. How are we going to pay for everything? To begin with, we stop paying two rents. I'll move in here. We'll get a couch. We'll set up a crib. I'll get a real job. I want you to keep writing. But I'll do whatever it takes for us to be happy. I'll, I'll go back to school, get my teaching degree. I'll have to take time off from school. There will be time. There's, there's no rush. We'll do this together. You, 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 you don't know how happy you've made me. Have I? Are you happy? I don't know. Do I have to know? Does it matter? So of course it matters. Why, why would you think it wouldn't? It's just that I want us to be happy. And if you really think a child will make us happy... Well, I don't know if this would make us happy. But if we didn't, we'd always wonder. And if I decided not to have this child? I can't make that decision for you. I thought maybe it was too soon to tell you. Who else knows? No one. It's not it, It's not about anybody well, else. And what does this kid have to say about all this? Huh? Hey, kid. <laughs> do you think he'd be happy as a teacher? I'm happy whatever I do. You said you uh, had uh, writing. You wanted me to read. Oh, uh, that's nothing. It, it might be a paragraph. Well, do you want me to read it? I want you to tell me how you feel. How, I mean, have you been to the doctor? Do you feel all right? Do you want, you want you want need to lay down? No, I don't need to lay down. What about your paragraph? You really want to know? Well, it starts with this old guy uh, who owns a record shop, and this younger guy starts working for him. Now, at first they disagree about music, but then JP. he. JP. Yeah. Can we talk about it later? Of course. Can we lay down for a while? Yeah, of course. Or just lay down standing up. You want to stand up? You know, like when you hold me in your arms and it's like we're laying down, but we're standing that. We could lay down. I'd rather stand here with you. Simone and JP stand together, holding each other. Okay, is that okay? It's much better. Have you thought about names? No. What do you think of Marissa for a girl? Sounds like Larissa. Well, I was thinking Marissa Tomei. I mean, Marcy for short, or, or Tyler for a boy. I mean, no one would pick on a boy named Tyler. I haven't thought about names. Uh, um, ever? Can we just wait until tomorrow to talk about names? Yes. Yes? Yeah. 
We can wait until tomorrow. Lights down. Act one, scene six. Lights are still down. Simone and JP are laying down on the living room with blankets. JP. Yeah. You awake? Yeah. You're not just talking in your sleep? I'm awake. What are you thinking about? My dad. What was he like? Uh, he was funny. In his own way, he always had a joke to tell. He worked a lot. He was gone a lot of the time. How long ago did he die? Four years ago. I'm sorry. I miss him. I miss my mom. Simone sits up and she lights a candle. You want me to turn the light on? No, this is good. It's midnight. What happens at midnight? I light a candle at midnight every year on this day in April. It's the day my mom died. You let it burn all night? Yep. Isn't that dangerous? It'll be fine. Is that why we're sleeping out here tonight? The bed is too soft. I can't sleep. We've been together seven months. You know that? I know. Are you happy? Do you want to take a pause? I think it's too late to take a pause. You got my paperwork in for teacher's college. You're going to do that then? Be a teacher? It'll be good for us. Promise me we'll always be us, JP. Just like this. Can we get a couch? We can get a sofa. What? Why do you insist on calling it a sofa? This sounds more sophisticated. Well, because if we had a sofa right now, we could be lying on it. I'm scared we're going to change. We're not going to change. We'll always be us. He turns over and goes to sleep. Simone takes the candle and comes out into a spotlight to address the audience. But of course we did change. How could we stay the same when everything around us, inside us, was changing? <laughs> Our son was born in September, the same month we first became us, genius and darling. We called him Mac. I, I couldn't call him Tyler. I didn't want other kids to be afraid of him. We lived in that apartment for years, six, seven, eight years. Mac went to school around the corner. He was interested in sports, maybe because JP and I weren't. We went to JP's mother's for Christmas. She judged everything I did. JP became a teacher and I finished my degree. We worked, we slept, we got up every day and did mostly the same thing. And then one day JP and me weren't us anymore. Not the way we were then. We came apart, we got older, we changed. It was almost unbelievable that two people could go from strangers to friends to two people in love and back to strangers again. We knew each other better than anyone and then we didn't know each other at all. We realized it at the same time. It was a relief when we finally agreed to take a pause, a separation, a divorce. JP moved out, got his own place nearby, and Mac went back and forth between us. All we talked about was Mac, our schedules, who would pick him up. We found ways for Mac to come and go so we didn't have to see each other. 
Maybe it hurt too much to see each other. Maybe we reminded each other of who we once were. Younger versions of ourselves with big dreams, writing and acting and dancing to the music in our minds. Those people didn't exist anymore. We became other people. A decade later, everything was different. She blows out the candle. End of Act One. <clears throat> Act Two, Scene One. Sound of flies. Lights rise on Simone, 12 years later, sitting outside in a lawn chair, reading a book, occasionally swatting the air. She is fashionably dressed. There is a large bag next to her on the ground. The sound of flies diminishes as JP enters. He's also dressed for the outdoors, but with an overly zealous sense of pragmatism, as if he were going on a safari. He carries a large backpack. Simone? Why are you dressed like that? Like what? I didn't expect to see you here. Sorry to disappoint you. Like you've been living in the woods. Well, I have been living in the woods. How long have you been here? By yourself? Not long. Can we please talk about one thing at a time? It's too difficult for you. Otherwise, yes. JP sets his backpack down. I thought we agreed that I was going to pick up Mac. I wanted to get out of the city. You can take him like we planned. I only wanted to see him when he got off the bus. It's been a quiet summer without him. We've never been apart this long. How are you? How am I? It's a perfectly normal question. I'm fine. How are you? I was being sincere. I'm fine, JP. Most people call me John these days. I am not calling you John. Why not? I don't want to sound like your mother. How's that? We had an argument once. Which one? I don't remember which one, but... It at one point, I lost my temper and I called you John. You said that it reminded you of your mother and how she used to use your name when you were being scolded. I vowed to never say it again. I don't want you to confuse me with that woman. Not a problem. Did you hear much from Mac this summer? You know how it is. At first he wrote every day and then he made friends and disappeared into his world of play, as a child should. He won't be a child much longer. Twelve and three weeks. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm glad he's made new friends. I wouldn't want him to be lonely at camp. It's not like he went out in the woods by himself. Well, maybe he'll want to one day. Sit by himself here, reading a book. We can continue taking tiny jabs at each other until the bus arrives, or I can read my book, which I was enjoying. I can go somewhere else. Do what you like. Simone continues reading her book. JP considers leaving, and then opens his backpack and rummages around. It would be nice if we could have a conversation without jabbing at each other. That's what we've become, darling. Exes who jab. Don't call me darling. I didn't mean anything by it. Exactly. She puts the book down and stands. All right. <clears throat> what do you want to talk about, John? You know what? I don't like you calling me that. JP is better. What are you doing out in the woods this late in the summer? Don't you go back to work next week? I'm not going back. I quit teaching. Really? Good for you. I know how much you disliked it. No, I didn't dislike it. You disliked it. Well, what are you going to do with all your free time? I'm going to write. Really? Really. What are you going to write about? I don't know. I'm, I'm still figuring that out. I have ideas. Sketches, outlines, ideas. I'm sure whatever you write will be brilliant. You don't mean that. I'm sure. I'm sure whatever you write will be just like you. Do you ever say anything sincerely? You're the one who wanted to have a conversation. And somehow when we do, you turn it into me telling you things I didn't want to tell you. Did I do that? 
I had no idea I did that. It's part of your competitive nature. You get to get things out of people, to make them feel inferior to you. Oh, yes, I'm such a monster. Yeah, ever, ever since you won that prize. I was a monster long before that prize. Not when we first met, you weren't. You weren't a monster when we met. Please, don't get sentimental about ancient history. Well, I was there. I knew you when. I saw the real you. You saw what you wanted to see, a young woman, practically still a girl, who fell for your charm, and then realized much too late that, that, was, that there was more she wanted from life than to stand by her man or behind him. Much too late? Is that how you feel about our son? I was not referring to Mac. Then at what point was it much too late? When we got married? I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. I was being dramatic. Please, don't be mad, darling. Don't call me darling! It makes you sound pretentious. I'm pretentious? You're the one who came along dressed like a mountain man and started an argument. I can go somewhere else. Go or stay. It really doesn't matter to me. What are you writing these days? Nothing you'd be interested in, just just more of that poshy art crap, like you used to call it. <laughs> I never called your writing poshy art crap. I distinctly remember you calling my writing crap. Well, I'm sure I didn't mean it. You were drunk, if it's an excuse. I don't remember. It was the year before we split. We were living in that little apartment over the bookstore and your friends were over. Your friends from the band. Why do you say it like that? They were the band. You were anxious, as usual, to impress them with your musical knowledge. I never tried to impress them. So that they would accept you into their click world of indie rock. Well, why are you insulting my old band? That you insulted one of my favorite artists just to please them. Your band. I didn't mean it possessively. Who, who, who did I insult? A jazz musician. You could have just used our instead of my. It's a bad habit. I, I don't remember which one. It doesn't matter now. It was one of many. One of many what? Many of your bad habits, like getting drunk, far drunker than was necessary, and calling my writing poshy art crap while I was in the other room. When you thought I hadn't heard. Just to impress a bunch of slobbering idiots who didn't have the decency to say hello to me in my own house. You wanted to impress them with your vast array of obscurities and let them know that any writing other than the regular pulp fiction of similarly-minded writers was crap. There it is. It's your old fear of popular culture. Fear? No. Disdain? Yes. As if you didn't pride yourself on your own obscure musical knowledge of jazz. I mean, the only difference is genre. The only difference is when my friends came around, we didn't call the music you insisted on playing pretentious. Well, I, I never insisted on playing music. You were forever controlling the music, the sound, the mood of the room. I was trying to be nice. Nice? Yes, yes, taking care of the music so you could relax and talk with your friends. So you could avoid any real intellectual discussions, you uh, mean. What, you mean bitching about the university administration? Bitching? I didn't mean because you were all women. No, of course. And I didn't avoid intellectual discussions. There was just never an opening for me to participate. You could have just jumped in at any time. It was all terminology. If you were talking about a film, you'd ask, what is media? I mean, how did the camera inform the narration? I mean, you'd, you'd never just say, I like the soundtrack. Well, the story was lame, or the dialogue was good, or I could relate. You could have said any of that. Oh, and risk the judgment of your friends. There's no difference from when your band boys were over. So, what, is, is that why we broke up then? Because we didn't like each other's friends? Sure, let's go with that. Are you seeing anyone? No. Not that it's any of your business. Well, if Mac is with you and there's someone staying over... There's no one staying over. Okay. When Mac is with me. <laughs> Maureen and I are talking about getting married. Good. I like 
Maureen. Yeah, I like Maureen too. Mm. And Mac likes it. When's the date? We're not quite there yet. There's a lot to consider now that I'm not teaching. You and Maureen have been living together for years. Marry her already. I just want it to be the right time. And that was always your problem. You didn't dive into something that scared you. You tested the water, got up to your knees, and then turned around and sat it out. I didn't do that with you. We didn't have a choice. Max surprised us both. The only person who wasn't surprised was your mother. She thought I planned it. What, is that why you think she doesn't like you? Your mother didn't like me from the first time we met. She looked me up and down. Actually looked me up and down. Assessed me in the doorway of her plush par uh, carpeted hallway. And, and she decided within seconds that I was not good enough for that, you. That was so long ago. She's changed. No, she hasn't changed. I've changed. Simone pulls a bottle of lotion from her bag and applies it to her hands and legs. She's very ill, you know, my mother. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you? I'm sorry for you. And for Max, since she is his grandmother. You could be more generous, Simone. She is my mother. I've had enough of being generous towards your mother. She's half the reason you're as unhappy as you are. I'm not unhappy. I'm the least unhappy person I know. You don't even know that you're unhappy. I am not unhappy. Your mother has been ruling your life since you were a little boy. She's the reason you became a teacher instead of a writer. She's the reason you're still lost wandering around in the woods by yourself. She probably doesn't even think Maureen is good enough for you either. No one could be good enough for her little boy. I am not wandering around lost. This was intentional. I wanted to be a teacher. You wanted to be a writer. You should be writing instead of wandering around the forest. How could I have supported us as a writer? I didn't want you to support us. She didn't want me living in poverty. <laughs> she didn't want her grandson growing up like me. That's not fair. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you have a child how people feel like they have a right to interfere to tell you what kind of job to have you would have preferred living with less I would have preferred knowing that you were alive doing what you wanted believing in yourself and chasing your dreams instead of settling for her idea of what you should be doing with your life how could you have wanted less for Matt how is that less I see it as more. I, I don't want Matt to grow up in a bubble, some suburban dystopia of middle-class aspirations. A house on a tree-lined street is a dystopia. There is nothing wrong with our apartment over the bookstore. Your mother never visited us there even once. I'm sure she came by. Not while I was there. I didn't know she hurt you. She didn't. She hurt you. And you cared too much about she, what she wanted, what she thought. I thought you wanted a family. No, JP, I didn't. But then when we had one, th that was fine. It was, it was even good. Sometimes. But it's not what I wanted. It's just what happened. I hope you never tell Mac that. Why would I tell a 12-year-old that? He's not old enough to understand. No one should ever think they weren't wanted, no matter how old they are. I did not intend on getting pregnant. And that's not the same as not being wanted. It sounds like the same thing to me. Because too many women have doted on you. Starting with your mother. You couldn't imagine not being the center of things. JP pulls a can of beer out of his bag. I picked this up while I was in town. You want to split it? After it's been in your dirty, warm pack? No, thanks. Simone pulls a chilled half bottle of wine from her bag and a glass. JP opens his beer. Simone pours herself a glass.
think the other parents are judging us? They wish they'd thought of bringing cocktails too. <laughs> I got myself a writing coach. You're serious about this? Yeah, of course I'm serious. That's why I have a writing coach. Anyone I know? Yes. Oh, please. Don't say it's Larissa. Yeah, it's Larissa. Oh, JP, she's a terrible writer. No, she isn't terrible. She's terrible. No, she had five books published and has been shortlisted twice. Her coaching rates are very reasonable, though she might be giving me a discount because we're friends. The first step to writing an award-winning novel is to pick a writing coach because they offer discounts. Like her approach is very doable. She breaks it down into manageable parts. You know, <laughs> 2,000 words a day, which is only a few hours a day. Leaves lots of times for other things, like hiking in the woods and drinking warm beer. Look, I've already got my, my premise written out, and what Larissa calls the guiding light. Is it a premise or a winged messenger sporting a halo? Look, I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. Thank goodness. No, that's, that's, you know, that's another thing Larissa says. Don't talk about it. Mm. Just write it. 2,000 words a day. No, more or less. Which means you'd have your first draft in, what, 30 days? No, something like that. And Larissa has probably also gone over the steps of fleshing out your characters, ordering your chapters, verifying structure, making sure the outline is solid before you begin. Yes. You could have saved yourself money and looked that up on the internet. As, any, as someone who has taught for the last decade, I do believe in learning from actual teachers in person. You and Larissa meet in person? Well, no, she lives in Santa Fe. Hey, if that's working for you, then do what works for you. Yeah, but you don't approve. You don't need my approval. I know that. I just wonder if your advice would be different. On how to write a novel in 30 days? Yes. I don't write novels, but I wouldn't suggest anything so formulaic. I'd say just write. Very structured. Art isn't a lesson plan. It isn't a setting a timer and fulfilling a word count. Art, art is poetic, not bureaucratic. It's messy, unplanned, and then, and then sometimes it is planned. It's about discovery. It's what you don't know is what you know uh but not in a formula formulaic way not in, in in retelling what's been told there's no genius in that you have your own voice and your own way of writing that you need to believe in write what you're passionate about it's fine to follow Larissa's 10-step program for getting words down, but do it your way. Bend the rules to your vision. Write about what excites you. <laughs> Don't write like Larissa. Don't turn all your characters into people from your past. I know what's inside you. And there's poetry and passion it's lurking there underneath <laughs> underneath that safari ensemble you're wearing <laughs> what's wrong with what i'm wearing darling there isn't time no no go on <laughs> the bus isn't here yet it's not for me to tell you how to dress no, i'm asking here we are in cottage country and you're dressed as if you're about to enter the jungle in cambodia it's exaggerated one never needs to give up a sense of personal style for a stroll in the woods. And that t-shirt is 20 years too late. I love this t-shirt. Everything on the outside reflects what's on the inside. Oh, here comes the bus. Finally, Mac is home. She gathers her, gathers her things up and folds her chair. Let me say hi first. And then you can have him, okay? Okay. It was good for us to talk again. About writing, at least. It's been a long time since we talked like this. I can't wait, wait to read your novel, JP. I know you'll be brilliant. And I am being sincere. Simone waves. And runs off stage.
JP stands behind, taking off his safari, stuffing it in his backpack, and addresses the audience. I thought about what Simone said. It annoyed me, but I knew she was right. I had to write what I was passionate about. And I had to remember what that was. I'd been, it'd been a long time since I'd searched for what made me feel deeply. Meaning, life, the universe. So I went back to the classics, to the philosophers, to the poets. I started to remember what it felt like when I was a child and I, <laughs> I played in the woods behind our house until it was dark. And I remembered the thrill of my first kiss and the heartbreak of my first love. What happened between Simone and me. Those memories woke up parts that had been sleeping. Some ways of thinking that, that I'd left behind. I took up meditation. I don't think it worked, but I did it anyway. And I walked every day, long walks, and talked to myself and wrote morning till night. Walking, eating, sleeping, and writing. Now, I didn't write a novel in 30 days. It took six months of intense focus. But it flowed from me, and, and I cared about it deeply. It was a world that I invented. The world that I knew. A love story that I needed to write. I even met a publisher who wanted to put it in the right hands. You talk about luck. My book got listed as one to watch. I had interviews. I bought new clothes. I got congratulations from Simone. And then two years later, we were in the same place to pick up Mac. And that's, that's all, all you're, you're gonna, gonna get. get tonight. That's all you that's get. That's all you get tonight. Part two. Part two, everybody. Part three, Monday Part night. Part three, Monday night. The exciting conclusion. Yes. What a fun play. What a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful piece of writing. It is beautiful. We love it. Thank you, Kathleen. A mumblecore inspired love story in two acts. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, it was fun. so good. And great fun to play. Yeah, well, thanks everybody for being with us on this fun Friday night. Um, we have, I'm sure, on the Facebook page, not only is the program there, but um, there's also a post about uh, Kathleen to find out more. And I just couldn't help myself, Kathleen. I made a special post about your visual art. So yes. there's photos of some of Kathleen's paintings and some of her multimedia pieces. Um, and so I encourage you all, there's a link specifically to her um, visual art page on her website. Her work is so beautiful. So uh, check out her artwork because not only is she a hell of a writer, she is a hell of a visual artist. Right on. As well as a filmmaker. She has great films that we'll talk about uh, on Monday. That's so right. uh, you, know, you know, you guys, we always do a special toast at the end of the show. This is like cool number 34, episode 34. But we're mixing it up a little bit here tonight. Uh, it goes without saying that the world is one crazy ass place. And uh, it's okay, this is gonna be a happy one. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so we don't need to get into all of that because we come to the theater to talk about something else. But instead of a toast tonight, we're giving you a challenge. So all you folks out there watching, uh, we got a letter in the mail today, a handwritten letter. When's the last time you got a handwritten letter in the mail? And it was a multiple page letter from some really dear friends of ours in California, fellow artists, uh, Brittany and Phil. And Phil said something so beautiful in this letter to me that it's inspired me to share it with all of you. So, uh, 
here's your challenge. Make something beautiful. Make something good. Let me make some more music here. Hold on a second. <laughs> Can you make this happen? Okay. Um, make something beautiful. Make something good. Here it is, y'all. Add rather than subtracting. Add rather than subtracting. Stand up for what is right. Do something kind. So here it is. Over the weekend, I want all of you to do one small kind gesture. It can be something absolutely free. It can cost 50 cents. It can cost $2. It can just be saying something nice to somebody on the road. It could be standing up for something, standing up for somebody. It could be big, it could be small, but do something beautiful, do something kind. Uh, make the world a better place. Right yeah, that's it. Right so I'll drink to that. We'll drink to that. Here's your challenge. Beverage. And on Monday, we want to know what you did. To the challenge. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We're right in for it. To the challenge. Well. Okay. Thanks, it's everybody. It's time for the weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. Have fun. And um, we're so glad you're here. And we can't wait. For the final installment on Monday. Yeah. To conclude this great play. Final installment on Monday. If uh, share it with your friends, tell your people, uh, come play with us. Uh, all the archives are there if you missed episodes one and two. That's right. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay home and watch Tiny Theater. All right. We love you guys. Thank you, Kathleen, for sharing your story. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can you get it? I can't reach it. Here's my kind We're thing. Oh!